Hello everybody, my name is Ryan Scalf with Military Memories and More and today we're going to be bringing you a demonstration on how we mount our cross stitch and our needlework. Alright, this particular project that we've got here is going to be in the specs and the size of an 11, 11 inch by 14 inch framed project. There isn't going to be any mat board used on this one. The customer didn't want any mat board. So that makes it even a little bit more of a challenge but luckily uh, here in a second I'm going to show you the list of items that we use within these projects. We've got one specific tool that we came across in the uh, Las Vegas framing show last year that has paid its dividends already, in the, especially in these projects here. Um, the first item that we, we want to use is our uh, backing board that the, cr the cross stitch or uh, whatever needlework that's going to be put into the project, whatever the customer might bring in. We've got uh, eighth inch foam core that we use. It could be white, it might be black, just depends on which uh, kind of front, which type of uh, design or stitch that they've done and the material color that they've used on it. Most of the time with these ones it's going to be white because it's temper, uh, most, most of the times it's going to be that off white or this one here is more of a cream color that you can see. I've already pre-cut the foam core to an 11 inch by 14 inch size that's what we're going to be using today. Um, that's the first piece that we're going to need along with the uh, actual stitching. We also like to use a, in a spray bottle, it's an isopropyl alcohol. What this does is you can spray it onto the cross stitches and the needlework without worrying about it damaging the material. It does not bleed, the, the, the colored thread does not bleed with it. It relaxes the material and it'll get out the wrinkles and uh, once it starts to dry it'll, it'll stay in that shape and form so that if you press out the wrinkles this right here works, uh, it, it keeps it flat. We also like to use a 12 inch ruler or whatever size it, the project may call for. This one here is actually a 17 inch, it's a little bit better, you got a few more inches to work with. Got a, a angled needle nose pliers. Also uh, some snips, that these, these go hand in hand with the uh, attaching tool that we've got. Sometimes it doesn't take real good and you got to take out the tags that it inserts. And now what we'll do is we'll lay the foam core down and this one here my plan is to have a one inch border all the way around this and I've kind of already looked at it and pre-shaped this one a little bit. I sprayed it earlier to give me a little a bit of an indentation to help speed up the demonstration for you guys. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how you can take the spray bottle, spray it down. You don't want to get too crazy with it, but coat it down pretty good. And then what you can do is start flattening this out. Make sure your hands are clean, of course. You don't want to be rubbing off any dirt onto the customer's project they won't be real happy with you but this this stuff once it dries I mean you can spray it over and over and over again and it does not do any harm to it if anything it helps you out the more times you can coat it the better really because it really flattens and keeps it smooth down it makes your your job of uh, fastening this down and really keeping it to where it has that pressed look as you're seeing already now it's starting to take the shape of this foam core here. And what I like to do is get it to where it has a really nice indentation around the edges here so I can see where my tacking is going to go for the tool here. What I'll use these here and I'll, because the frame will have a quarter inch lip going up over this, I know I have a quarter of an inch of room to work with in terms of being able to tack this down which I'm going to show you here in just a minute. Let this take hold and dry a little bit more. Then what I'll do is take my ruler Looks like I have it eyeballed pretty good right here. But just to double check to make sure I'm close to the inch mark. If it's off a little bit, it doesn't matter. You don't want to be too far off, but you can take the tacking tool and grab a little bit of material and stretch it to the, the shape and make sure that you keep a nice consistent form going all the way around. So what I'll do here now is being as I got this right where I'm thinking I need it. Let me take another measurement up top here. This is looking alright. I might be a little off. 
doesn't hurt to measure and if you think you haven't done it enough measure again I find the more you can measure the better it's going to be the more accurate it'll be Alright, that looks pretty good. I like to start in a corner and get me a corner tack down and see how this bottom here has got more of a border line that I can work with. So rather than try to start at the top where it's got a, a broke up, uh, I don't know what to say, this one's here, you got your more, your more straight line to be able to work with to make sure you stay on that one inch. This is a broke up pattern to where it's not, not consistent is what I'm looking for, an inconsistent pattern. So I'm going to start off down on this corner. Usually if I can get an inch started on this side and an inch here, I'll start working my way out and into the corner, into the far angled corner. So it's kind of going from one angled corner to the other and just working along the seam lines here. So I'm going to take my tool, I'm going to tack this down right here. It's got a needle that will poke through. It's just a, like a gun, you squeeze the trigger and it releases the tack. You can see, you can probably even hardly see that now once that releases up a little bit it'll become completely in invisible ouch I just stabbed myself make sure you don't do that bleed all over the project we're good see how that's working like that. Now what I'll do is I'll continue to do this all the way around the project, doing a little bit up this way, then I'll do a little down on the bottom here, making sure I measure as I go, keeping that one inch profile that I'm looking for. Okay, so now I've started at this bottom corner here and I've got a couple tacks started to get me start to get me going here on my line. I'm going to kick it into warp speed here so we can move on to the next phase of the project. Alright, I'm about to make the final tacks down on this particular cross stitch here. I've made it all the way around the whole entire edges here and I've just got a few more to tack down and then try and take a look over the whole thing and make sure that we're pretty square on everything and then where we go from here is uh, we would uh, in turn spray it a couple more times with this alcohol here where I'm going to do here in just a second and try and get that flattened down one final time and then what I'll do is uh, fold over the excess to the back and we have a uh, acid free industrialized type uh, tape to where it's not damaging to the to the material so that looks like it's pretty pretty square to me there's the uh, finished project right there Okay, we'll let this dry now and then uh, I'm going to go off and cut my piece of glass and everything before I finish off this here and when I get back I will uh, show you how we fold and fold off the back side. Okay, now I've went back and I've got my glass cut and then I've also got went ahead and made my frame too. I should have done that prior to doing this video but I had to take a brief pause there. Now we're back. We're going to be finishing up the back side of this project here. So what we're going to do in turn here is, this is pretty simple now, we've got it attached really well. I can just take this, lay it face down, and make sure you got a nice clean surface so that when you're laying it face down you aren't going to pick up any kind of debris or dirt or dust or anything like that off of the table you might be working on. So I got a nice, we like, we use these tissue paper sleeves. So now I'll, it's, it's not anything real fancy on this back side or anything like that. It's just enough to be able to secure this back enough so that when we sleeve it into the frame itself, it's not getting in the way. It's just kind of 
helping it stay back. Like I said before, this is acid-free tape, so it is not going to be damaging anything here. All right, that's basically it. I don't need to worry about it too much because I will. I'm going to end up finishing off the back side to where none of this is going to be seen. This is just kind of helping lay things down, really. So now that's it. That's what this portion of it looks like so far. And now the only thing left to do here is I've already went and I've pre-cleaned the glass and assembled my frame, as I said just a few minutes ago. And what I can do now is I'll lay my glass on top of there, get a look at things. It looks like I got one little thread that needs to come out of here. This is where you want to start looking things over and seeing if any kind of dust or any specks or anything's gotten stuck into the uh, material anywhere. So far we're looking pretty good it looks like. And she chose a polystyrene walnut frame that has like a built-in fillet to it so that should fit nicely. Look at that coming together. So now this is what we're working with here, as you can see. Hopefully there's no glare on this. Again, this is an 11 by 14 frame. And we've got a uh, nice, it's almost like a staple gun, but it drives the backings into this. Looks just like this, Fletcher, great brand. And what these do now, you wanna make sure you don't stab through to the uh, What that does is fastens that around just like that and I'll continue to go around the whole entire project and that pretty much is it on that part of it so I like going over where those folds are at it helps hold that down just like that you see three or four on a side depending on where it's loose at you can feel it gotta love the proper tools without them you're just working against yourself so it makes you stand above the rest if you have the right tools okay so now we see that's in there really well it's not going to come out of there i'm not going to press my fingers on the glass but that's it and now from this part here, we have double-sided ATG tape that we use. And I'll run a bead along each end here. We do have our website, as I've mentioned in previous videos, militarymemoriesandmore.com. I usually like putting one right strip of this tape down through the center too. That helps hold the uh, backing paper, the finishing paper down so that if there's any kind of air pockets in here it uh, holds it down. I'm trying to move quick here for you guys. Alright, so now you can see that I've laid down that tape, peeled off the paper portion of it and what that's left is my tape exposed here. So now that I lay this paper down, we uh, sometimes use brown but most of the time we use our black paper. It just looks classier. Alright. Here's our paper and the trick. Go from center out the paper, just leave it in a fold, lay it down, spread out from the center out. And that's it. We've even got a uh, tool that we utilize on this here to make sure we get the proper edges off this paper here. So it's got a blade and a uh, guide attachment to it. Run it along the side. Comes off really nice, nice clean lines. Oop. That one didn't go so cleanly. Sometimes it snags. It's got to roll with it. The beauty of this ATG tape and everything else is that it, even though that snagged, I got a good enough cut on there, it comes off nicely. All you got to do is really get a halfway decent score on it and it'll peel off. Off to the last edge here. All right.
right. Somehow I got lucky this time and only got a little bit here. That ATG tape, if there's any excess on the edges here, as you can see here, I can just take my thumb and roll along it. And it's almost like rubber cement. Once it starts to dry, it'll just roll right off of there in your hands and you can remove it. That way we got a nice clean edge around everything here. So now we've got our front. Everything's nice and clean. No, no debris inside the glass. And now we finished off our back here. The only thing left to do is put our label with our information. See, ooh, I got lucky where it tore there. I got a rubber bar bumper that's going to be going right over that so I can mask that. Last thing that we do is put a hanger on here and you're good to go. Customer can come pick it up. That's it. Again, my name's Ryan Scalf with Military Memories and More, 309-289-0099. Or you can check out our website, militarymemoriesandmore.com. We're also uh, can be found on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Google+, you name it, all the social networks and media outlets that are available to you out there. We're on there. You can find us just about anywhere. And uh, appreciate you guys watching the video.